All right, here's a June update for the food forest. Got a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's to an untrained eye, it kind of looks like a hot mess, but there is some order to the madness. So essentially the basic pattern of the system is one, two, three rows, the two outside rows, I'm gonna focus primarily on fruit trees and uh, other trees in general. And the middle row will be focused primarily on root crops and other quick transition foods that I can put in and out, plug in, harvest, put other stuff in while the two tree rows grow and eventually shade out the middle row. Um, so yeah, let me just give you a basic little rundown of the system. Starting off here, this is my compost pit. Um, you know, kitchen waste all goes in here and mixed with wood chips and whatever else I can find. And then I have little service species scattered around napier grass, pigeon pea, gandul, different kinds of malanga. I don't know, just kind of to have a bank of, you know, seeds and cuttings that I can take from there um, and propagate them elsewhere. Uh, but here's a good example of what I'm trying to do, you know, in some tropic agriculture and food forest theory, you want to have as much food as you can in all the different levels or stratas. So you, here we have seminal pumpkin, which is a ground layer, right now, literally right next to a banana, which will eventually grow up higher, so they're not competing for light or energy. Um, just some corn here that is also just quick to mature, and I can take that out of, this, out of the system whenever something like this fruit tree, the sour sap guanabana, gets bigger. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot here. And there's surprises every day because I just plant a whole bunch of random things and I forget about it. And then they come up like, totally forgot that I had planted jackfruit seedlings, seeds a long time ago and they're coming up. Uh, pro tip, definitely found that these survey markers, survey flags are an amazing way to sort of <laughs> keep track of all the stuff you plant and then forget about. Um, but here's uh, the middle rows, which are less focused on tree production and more focused on roots, like sweet potatoes and cassava and uh, let's see if I have any malanga around here I probably do somewhere and in the middles I also want to uh, experiment with putting papaya in there because they're a pretty quick turnaround in terms of you know like trees um, while the trees on that row in that row mature and become big these papayas I'll be able to harvest a few rounds of papayas before the trees on the sides get too big. Here's another seminal pumpkin. Um, and another one I wanna. Um, but yeah, here's some more action of the middle row. These casters just, hold on, this caster is even bigger. I don't know what, I don't know why this cast, these casters are huge, but I'm definitely gonna save the seed from this <laughs> to propagate it elsewhere but I just wanted to show the importance of having the different layers underneath the shade of the castor bean these sweet potatoes are looking healthy and starting to take off um, I had planted sweet potato earlier in the year and there wasn't as much shade and it was a lot drier then and a good chunk of my sweet potato cuttings suffered and died because of the extreme dryness. They just dried up and withered away. So I've got sweet potatoes kind of everywhere in this middle row. A big uh, 
reason why I want to have so many sweet potatoes and some of the pumpkins is because my sister just had a baby and I want to have the prime okay. material for some awesome baby food. So, um, yeah, here's some, some more trees. I got coconuts, a lot of uh, Mexican sunflower everywhere. And a lot of weeds coming up too, but you know, they're a good source of biomass, so I don't really mind the weeds. Here's a uh, low pot tree. So this is the first block that I started off with, kind of, here I'll show you. These, these three rows right here, one, two, three. Um, kind of when I first got here and I did all of this with a pitchfork, not a pitchfork, a pickaxe. And I didn't have a, a tiller yet, but luckily since then I've had, I have a little tiller. And from here down, uh, I used the tiller to break up the sod because the sod was gnarly. Um, but here's an example of a more refined approach to, to the food forest. Bananas, cassava, lemongrass, castor, there's even okra here, which it was just an experiment. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get off them, but they're already starting to produce little babies. And, and the plant is tiny and short, but I might get something out of it. You know, that's the whole point with the food forest. You have a lot of food at varying times of the year. I've already harvested lots of green peas back here, green beans, because um, I planted tons of beans back here to help me with some biomass. And now the only things that are left are pigeon peas and other more long-term species. Um, but here's, here's a good example of kind of what I'm trying to do tree row a future tree row i had a lot of cassava uh, during this time that i was prepping this bed so i just decided to go heavy with the cassava i think i might wait for harvest before i re-prep the bed and then maybe put more um, long-term fruit trees grafted fruit trees on this row um, but i'm not sure yet there's a lot of trial and error a lot of experimentation a lot of hit or miss and just learning as I go on. So again, here in the middle, eventually there'll, there'll be trees on either side. So I'm kind of trying to get as much production uh, as possible out of the middle row. So I've got some ginger planted all through here, uh, as well as some turmeric all through here too. So you can see the turmeric is starting to pop up. Uh, kind of maximizing space as much as possible. Um, and right here is the uh, abuelo and abuela, the grandmother, grandpa, whatever, of the system, the highly invasive ear leaf acacia. Very invasive species down here in South Florida and in the syntropic mindset invasive or adaptive species are a major tool in the arsenal of an agroforestry. So you can see here that I am using these invasive species to my advantage. You know, pruning them in a, such a way that they provide shade to the system as well as tons of biomass. Here's a, another one that I just recently pruned back. And I mean, just look at all this biomass here that I've yet to cut. I mean, just tons and tons of biomass for the system and you know in a couple weeks this is going to be loaded up again with foliage and i'll just cut it down again endless supply of biomass to feed all these babies um and then down here 
is a sea of sun hemp. The sun hemp is a really, really, really indispensable tool for an agroforester. It grows so fast and it germinates so readily. Um, but as you can see, I've kind of went overboard with the sun hemp and it's uh, starting to shade out a little bit too much. The banana, the cassava, here we go, some more cassava. Um, but it, it served its purpose, you know. During the, the dry season, it put up a very, very rapid shade layer. So a lot of the stuff that's growing down here, like the jack beans here that are starting to take off, more cassava. Um, you know, I'm eventually gonna be putting fruit trees in here as I take the sun hemp out. I mean, this banana is looking a lot healthier than a lot of other bananas, as is some of, as is this cassava. And, you know, there's just a lot of growth signaling that's happening because of all this, uh, the sun hemp taking off. But you can see here, there's, there's, there's a lack of irrigation here early in the season. So some of these seminal pumpkins aren't doing too hot. And I didn't fertilize a lot either. So all these corns didn't do that well either. But it was a, you know, corn seed is not the most expensive thing in the world. And I just decided to give it a shot. But here's a good example of kind of what it looks like before everything grows. So tons of organic matter, bananas, and then we're gonna plant other fruit trees in between. I'm gonna do a midline of some sort of maybe papaya, sweet potato, taro, uh, malanga, squash, I don't know yet, but something in the middle and then more fruit trees on the side. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna make this video too long because I could go on for hours describing on little details. But just a little progress update on my food forest. This is a newly planted section that will pop off soon enough, I'm sure. I've got a lot of support trees and cool different types of trees and bananas and fruit trees are already starting off. There's a Anona Trimoya as well as a avocado um, and you know tons of fungal activity that's the whole point we want to have our fungal friends with us all the time so oh, there's some more so anyways just a little update on the Centropic food forest system. A lot of food, a lot of different stratas, and a lot of life. 